Good afternoon and welcome to Blind Formers. I'm your host, Blind Prime, and for today we are transforming Transformers Legacy Evolution Armada Megatron from their tank mode into their vehicle mode, uh, into their robot mode. I, I'm so used to transforming things from robot mode to vehicle mode, and it's just kind of second nature for me to say that. Uh, this guy is unique in that he comes in packaged in vehicle mode, which is really nice, and I really absolutely love it whenever they package the Transformers in vehicle mode. I want the vehicle modes prevalent more often because I am a fan of the vehicle modes. I'm a fan of the transformation as well, and yeah, kind of a fan of the robots. I'm more loving the fact that a robot becomes a vehicle, and that, that is just what I'm down for in uh, in Transformers. I like that, that interaction, the transformation process on that. And uh, today we're gonna discuss and review the transformation process for Megatron here. Or amount of Megatron, and of course I'm going to verbally explain everything so that uh, you can put on a blindfold if you're visual, if you have vision, and you can follow along with me just using your hands and your ears. And in those of you who do not have vision, you can follow along using your hands and your ears as well. I uh, I, I do try to make sure that I've described everything as well as possible so that anyone can can figure out how to do this in a dark room. And uh, sometimes I'm not the best at it, but uh, I do try. I, I do try to make sure I've described it as best as possible. And that does mean that these videos can run longer than normal, but that is because sometimes a, a transformation is a little more complicated and requires some specific steps that I have to make sure that I explain to you in order. And sometimes in the video itself, I get it wrong and I have to reverse my actions and then uh, continue as, you know, just making it an educational lesson like hey don't do this now i have to reverse these things and uh why do i do that instead of just cutting uh i don't have an editor so everything i do here on this channel is one take every single video you see even the 30 minute ones that is one take that is me just talking at the camera and sometimes those videos the one that you see on my channel maybe the fourth or fifth time i've done that video until i got it right so I hope that you enjoyed today's video, and please like, share, and subscribe, and comment below. Tell me what you think about a, uh, you know, a channel that reviews the transformation and gives you a great score on the transformation alone. And, uh, you know, I, I thought it was a unique way of reviewing Transformers to break them into three pieces. After all, they're, they're three separate things, they're three separate toys. They are a robot, they are a vehicle, and they are a transformation. And each one of those is distinct and individualized. And I try my best to cover each individual, you know, each one of those separately. Now, whenever I have triple changers and stuff, I've got to push into Friday or Saturday to make sure that I've described everything. Or I just throw away the Monday video and we just do triple changer all week. But most things aren't triple changers, so we don't have to worry about that. Anyway, that's why you may see vehicle review and robot review. And the reason that they're the same number on the MME uh, more than meets the eye is because they are the same robot. I, I mean, the, the, the same transformer. I, I don't want to you know, misconstrue numbers. So, you know, if you're looking for 174, well, you, you, I think 174 was a transformer. Well, I know for a fact 175 is a transformer. Or no, 176. Mm, yeah, 174 was a transformer. So, uh, yeah, you got, uh, that was Snarl. Um, you do the robot, and then, you know, we did the blind formers on him, and then we did the more than meets the eye on his dinosaur mode. So that's how we do here on Blind Prime. We break it down, and we try to cover everything. I know it, it may take a little longer, and um, it's also because I try to describe the Transformers' textures, feels, and weights, and stuff like that, so that a person without vision can get an a basic understanding. I'm, I'm trying to give them enough of an understanding to figure out if they want it or not. Um, and that's that's what this channel did. We, we just, we're helping the blind make better decisions about their action figure experience, and we are helping the blind by describing how to transform it, because, I mean, I can't read those instruction manuals, and I doubt any other blind person can. It isn't like they, they come engraved or in braille or something like that. So, and it may be even hard to do that. Anyway, that's me explaining myself just a bit. So other than that, let's get into this Armada Megatron and talk about his transformation. Before I get too much into it, I took the Energon tube thing from the Red Cog 
and I put it on the end of Megatron's barrel because it's like the perfect length to make that barrel make sense to me. It's now a perfect barrel. I don't know about the color. I actually don't know what color this weird Energon tube thing is, but you know, I don't, I don't really care. It now feels like an appropriate tank barrel. So that's an option if you want. Um, I guess you could paint the Energon tube that comes in the red cog, uh, in whatever color you want to match the turret. But I do advise that's what it can be used for and it works perfectly. It's the right length. The barrel ends right at the front of the treads. You couldn't ask better length. Oh, it made me so happy whenever I found it. And I was like, it's perfect. Ah, oh, I have no idea what color it is. It may look a completely outrageous. It could be hot pink for all I know, but it's perfect in the texture and the length. Like the texture is great. You got this, the, the, the venti texture on the end of the, um, Energon tube feels like the, you know, like, like a spring compression area for the, for the turret, uh, so that the turret can like fold in itself just a bit whenever it shoots. And then you got the end is a bit spread out and it's got more vents on it. So it's like the, uh, end of a gun where it has the vents that allow the, the, uh, excess, uh, pro, uh, pressured air, the excess pressured air from behind the round to expand itself on either side. It's really neat. I do enjoy it. I think it's really cool. And um, it may look stupid, but at least it doesn't feel stupid. You know, that's that's that's, that's the nice thing there, you know. I always do that. You know, like, I wear clothing that feels right. Doesn't matter what it looks like. As long as you feel good in it. Uh, anyway, so let's get to this transformation. I'm going to pick the barrel up just so it's out of the way or I'm just not mess with it for now. All right. So what I do to start this transformation off is I try to break the legs. Um... Let's see. Yeah. So what you do here is you want to grab the rear treads, one rear tread in each hand. Okay. And then you want to push with your palms, but pull with your fingertips. Okay. So what we're doing is we're going to, we're going to try to make the ends of this tank's treads touch each other. The ones at the rear, the ones that I plugged the jet stuff into in the last video. So we're just going to pull those back. There we go. And with that, we've got two nice clicks to let us know that it did disengage itself from either side. And now that we've done that, we've got some very wibbly wobbly things sticking out on the sides. Now let's go ahead and straighten them up. So to straighten them up, you just take the tread and we're going to make the tread go horizontal. All right, and we're gonna make this tread do the same thing. We're just going to turn it so that it is flat across and it feels like you know this is the first steps in making a base mode or something and make sure that those legs are straightened out as much as they can be and the treads are going to be on either side once the legs are all straightened out go ahead and close these panels that were on the underside of the transformer on each side and pick the legs up there we go legs done now well not yet we got to come over here to the heel pull the heel down he's got a nice heel that's a really sturdy one and then pull the front of the foot down Nuts. There it goes. That's a really tough, tough joint. That is tougher than uh, the Victory Saber one, and I approve of that toughness. That does make it a lot sturdier. It, 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 this is not a, uh, you know, thin figure. It, it weighs, it, it's, it's a chunky guy. So having those sturdy feet mean good things for him. Look, he can even stand right now. Okay, next step. Rotate that turret just a bit. Uh, make sure you rotate. There it goes. Now we're going to rotate the entire... There it goes. Yeah, rotate it around. There we are. Okay, so after we've rotated the waist 180 degrees, you may have to move that turret out of the way, but otherwise it should do well. Now we're going to come over here to the arms. Now on each side of the treads that he has sticking up, his front treads, we've got this little panel. And uh, if you feel around... Look for that siege port, okay? That siege port on the side is the panel door. So you can plug something in there and use it to open the panel, or you can take your fingernail, find the edge that's below that siege pay, uh, port, and then we're gonna pull that up. Now we've revealed all these interworking arm stuff, and now we gotta figure out how to get these guys out. Next step though, before we get those arms out, you see there's a uh, there's a piece below the arm tread thing and it wiggle, it's connected to this and this took me a bit to find but uh, this piece is on each side so what you do is you feel down the tread you find the siege port 
then you deal down lower, you'll find this big hollow square section that I do wish the panel was hiding. And below that, you'll find that there's this big clumpy thing that's got some waffling on the underside of it. And if you feel it, put your finger in the underside of it, you'll find there's a hinge there. Now, this entire chunk actually pulls away from the arm. So this square that I discussed that you can feel like there's a joint in, and uh, this panel that comes up and down is part of that square. Uh, the panel's on the front. We'll talk about that panel later. Now, take your thumb, put it into that square below the rounded bit that is the end of that uh, the arm that's hidden in there, and then you want to pull down. Pull down. There it goes. And you will disconnect this panel, or this, this big, thick thing, from there. And it's just this clunky thing that's going to fold down, and it's going to uh, just kind of merge with the midsection of the robot. Now, we're going to fold this panel down, too. And that fills out Megatron's uh, chest area. That, that's a good job filling it out, and I approve of how that piece works. Now that we've got those pieces gone, it should be a lot easier to pull this arm out. So all you do is you reach in there with your fingernail and you grab it. Um, if you feel from the top of the tread down, you'll find that there's a bump in there. And then the bump has a, uh, has a cut in it, so you can use your fingernail and you can pull out that entire arm assembly. So let's do it on this side. Let's go ahead and... Now find that, there it goes, open that door up, then we're going to come down here, we're going to find the, uh, the groove with our fingernail, and then we're going to pull down the entire arm. Once the arm is pulled down, you're going to then just close that panel up on each side. And those panels can be used for storage for things if you want while in robot mode. Okay, now we're going to lower the arm, just pull the arm down, okay, there it goes, yeah. And now we're going to, if you feel on the inside of this arm, you'll find that the, the fist is folded in to the interior of the arm, and we're just going to use our fingernail to pull that fist out and connect it into place. Now, sadly, this fist doesn't have any articulation, but it does rotate like a sword fist, so that's good. And we're going to follow the same process here on the other side. We're going to find where that fist is, and we're going to make it pop out. Come on. Pop it. There you go. That's a good Megatron. All right. Now, to finish this up, we're going to kind of break these things down just slightly. We've got to raise these uh, treads up. We've got to raise these treads up. Okay? So we're just raising it up. Or maybe it's lowering them down. Oh, yeah, it's lowering them down. There, we go. there it is. Okay, cool. So that one's in place. And then this one's got a kind of lower it down and snap into place because I don't think these actually there it goes there we are yeah my bad you don't put them up on his shoulders he's got to have the ability to look around you slide them down on either side come on come on the other one and this is a really tough joint to get going but once you get it going it's got there it is there we go he's got some big broad shoulders um his tank bits just kind of stick up in the air, and I had honestly forgotten that he had that in the uh, show. And that's why I didn't like the Megatron too much. I thought those this this tanks kind of sticking straight up, those tank treads sticking straight up in the air just were weird. I didn't like them, so I guess that's why I never got him. Though then again, uh, I was too busy tra collecting Transformers alternators because I was a teenager. And I wanted to play with Transformers, but I also wanted girls to come over and go, Oh, he's just got model cars. He's a typical guy. I love the Transformers alternators for that. And it allowed you to be a geek and hide, you know, hide in plain sight. Okay, so yeah, making sure everything is together. That is how you build or transform Transformers Megatron uh, or Mata Megatron. He does, he's not got a really complicated transformation. It's blocky for sure. Um, overall rating for this transformation... I'm going to have to give it a, uh, yeah, I, I'm going to give it a, a 7 out of 10. Like, it does what it's supposed to, but it doesn't It doesn't wow me. It doesn't make me happy. Like, it, it's it's a pretty simple transformation. You just, and it's it's very, it, it's, it's kind of similar to the other H-Tank transformation. And I do wish they had figured out maybe a uh, more complicated transformation for him maybe make something more interesting instead of this it was very intuitive and it didn't take me long at all to figure out how to transform him um uh, so i'm not very happy with this transformation actually you know talking about it more i'm going to give it a six out of ten i i think this transformation is pretty weak 
it's a pretty weak transformation. But other than that, um, so we gave you know we'll uh, we'll talk about the robot mode tomorrow and really get in depth with it and talk to you about my grading for it. But yeah, uh, I'm going to grade this transformation harshly because the transformation is most of the reason why I get transformers, and this guy does not. He's just not got the greatest transformation. But thanks so much for watching today's video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Crane the Cat has been sleeping over here. I thought I was going to have an energetic orange cat, but turns out I've just got a happy Garfield. Yeah, all he does is eat and purr. Uh, you're like Garfield, but you're much happier. Anyway, thank you so much for watching today's video, and please tune in tomorrow. Until next time, bye-bye for now.